Hey, Ashley. I heard you were getting married. It seems like you're trying to show off to everyone. Huh? I mean, yeah, I'm getting married, but I'm not really trying to show off or anything. <sighs> Stop lying to me. You really have some nerve to lie when the news of your engagement is the talk of the town. Wait, people are talking about it? I heard from someone I knew back in middle school the other day, and then again from a different person today. Just because you're the first one out of all of us to get married doesn't mean you should let it go to your head. I didn't know that the news was spreading that fast. I guess that's why I get for telling the famous gossiping lady. Man, she's fast. It's almost scary. What? The news about my engagement is only spreading around so much because of that lady, who has a microphone practically embedded into her vocal cords. That lady talked to my mother about it, which then led to everyone else knowing. I'm guessing. So you're not going around telling people about your engagement? You know better than that, Casey. I have no friends to share such news with. I don't have any type of place to share that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's right. You've always been so pathetic since we were in middle school. Unlike me, who had all the friends and looks at school. Glad to have sorted that out then. Well, I'll be taking my leave. Oh, no, hang on a minute. We're not done talking here. Do you still have something you want to discuss? Even if the news spreading was not your doing, it's still true, isn't it? From what I've heard, you'll be having the wedding next month, right? Yeah, but what about it? That means you're still gonna get married the fastest out of all of us. <laughs> Pathetic little girl. Never expected you to get married this fast. <laughs> okay, but what does this have to do with anything? I wasn't really thinking about the timing of it. It doesn't matter if you weren't thinking about it, because it still pisses me off. How dare you, the lowlife, get married before me? Which is why I'll be taking your boyfriend, okay? What? Actually, he's currently fast asleep right next to me. <laughs> Hear that? Your fiancé, laying right next to me in the same bed. What did you say? Like I said, I can't stand to have you get married before I do. You don't deserve that right, being the pathetic loser that you are. You are not allowed to outshine me. Wait, are you really with my fiancé? <laughs> are you in that much disbelief? Don't worry, I'll send a nice picture of me and him together for you. Praise yourself for this one, okay? I'm sorry, Ashley. What have I done? Please delete that picture she sent you. Even if I delete it, the imagery is burned into my brain. To think that you cheat on me with my former classmate. It seemed like you guys were the ones in love with the way you were all cozy in bed with her. You got it all wrong. She means nothing to me. After a long day at work, I decided to get some drinks alone when she approached me. I was drunk, she was pretty cute, I couldn't resist. So what? Cheating is perfectly fine if you're drunk? That if they're cute, you can cheat on your fiancé? Is that what you're trying to say here? I didn't know that she was your former classmate. I'm really sorry, I promise that this will never happen again. You can do it as many times as you like. You're not my problem anymore. We are over. What? You don't want to get married to me anymore. But the wedding is soon. What are you saying all of a sudden? Of course the wedding is going to be cancelled. I never want to see your face ever again. I don't want to be with someone who betrays their fiancé. Hang on. I just cheated once. That shouldn't count as a betrayal. Plus, it was due to the alcohol. Don't be so mad about something like that. Something like that? You betray my trust and don't think it's a big deal? I'm actually just disappointed in you, Jason. Come on, I'm being sincere here. You're being so unreasonable. Don't be acting all high and mighty with me. 
being all whiny over being cheated on once. What did you just say? Cheating while intoxicated doesn't count. Everyone knows that. Yet here I am, apologizing for it like the good man I am. If that's how you feel, then fine. Forget it. I don't need a stubborn woman like you in my life anyways. What is wrong with you? You are in no position to get mad at me. You have some nerve to be angry at me. Shut up. I'll have you know that I didn't even want to cheat on you. I'm well aware that cheating on someone when you're engaged is not okay. But the thing is, she was way prettier than you, so I couldn't help it. What? If you're going to get all offended over something like this, then maybe you should work on yourself to prevent it from happening. Maybe if you were better looking, then I wouldn't have cheated. Even with the alcohol, I would have rejected any advances. Uh, so now you're placing the blame on me? All just because I don't look pretty as her, you're gonna sit there and blame me for you cheating? That's right. You're so focused on work that you barely pay attention to appearance. Looks matter most when it comes to women. Just because you make more money than I do, don't mean anything. Here I thought you were understanding of my work. It turns out you were hiding your real thoughts. This wedding is over. Who would even want you as a wife anyways? You don't have the heart to forgive people, and you aren't that good looking either. You'll be forever alone, you pathetic excuse of a woman. I have wonderful news. Jason proposed to me. It hasn't even been long since we got together, but we're already going to have the wedding soon. I already heard the news from others. The very few friends I had in the middle already told me. It seems like you're telling everyone you know about it, although you're keeping the home-wrecking story hidden from the conversation. Me? Brag to everyone? I would never! <laughs> Besides, marriage is a completely normal thing. No need to brag about it to others. <laughs> I was only telling all my friends about it. That's all. Oh, really? Just simply telling your friends? They all just got really happy for me. Whatever shall I do with them? I hadn't even really noticed, but they were all saying how I'd be the first one from our class to get married. Not to mention, he's the president of a company. Is that really such a big deal? Wait, the president of the company? <laughs> I didn't know until I started dating him, but Jason is the president of the company. I was planning on getting rid of him the moment I took him from you, but since he's the president, I decided to keep him around. He is the perfect husband for someone like me. Hang on, Jason said that he was the president? Yep, he sure did. I mean, that's why I accepted his proposal. Duh. And to think that a man like him almost married a person like you? He must have been so tired from work that he never really got a good glance at your face. <laughs> what? It's okay now though. He's completely focused on me now. He even said that the marriage can be any way that I want it to be. Right now, I'm thinking of a wedding with a budget of $80,000. $80,000 for a wedding? Where'd he even get that money? Is he really paying for all that? Of course he is. After all, he is my fiancé. A man of his level will give me such an amazing wedding. A pathetic loser like you can stay home and cry about it. Ah, oh, well you see, the reason I'm so confused is because I'm the president of the company. Huh? I'm not sure why Jason is claiming to be the president, but I'm the one in charge of everything at the company. He's just a normal office worker. What are you talking about? Are you trying to say that he's been lying to me? He definitely told me that he was the president, so he'll be able to pay for any wedding plan that I have. Okay, so then can you tell me what kind of company he works at? Huh? If he's the president as he claims, then he should be able to talk about his work with no problems. What kind of company it is and what they sell should all be easily answered by him. 
Okay, wait. What kind of company you work at? There is no way a loser like you would be in charge of a company. I work at the bridal company. I own wedding venues. Uh huh? Wedding venues? I've always been interested in wedding venues since I was younger. Even if I am still a pathetic loser. I always had dreamed of owning a wedding venue, which is why I created my company. I get many requests and such from a potential customers every day. We seem to be doing pretty well. You are lying! A loser like you being the president of a company? Which is why you should at least be wary of what Jason is telling you. Well, I'll take my leave now. See ya! What do I do? Casey wants to break up with me all of a sudden. We're gonna get married soon, but all of a sudden she said she doesn't want to marry me anymore. I mean, it makes sense why she would do that. You're the one who lied to her about being the president of the company. Hang on, I never lied. Casey said the same thing, but I have no idea what's going on. Huh? I never said that I was the president of the company. She just heard whatever she wanted to hear and ran with it. What are you talking about? She said that she was sure that you told her. When I proposed to her, she said that if she could go all out on wedding plans, then she'll agree. I told her that I know some people, so that's perfectly fine. I mentioned that I have company president connections, so she can do as she pleases. Company president connections, you say? That would cause her to misunderstand that. Wait, really? Do you have connections to a company president? I wasn't aware you knew somebody like that. What are you talking about? I know you, don't I? You're the one in charge of a bridal company. What? You weren't possibly thinking of having a wedding at my venue, right? A venue that your ex-girlfriend owns? A wedding venue to hold the wedding of a cheating ex-boyfriend? I mean, sure, we broke up, but we were at least engaged at a point. You would have given me a good deal no matter what type of wedding I had, right? Ex-boyfriend should give me more than 50. No, 90% off. <laughs> what kind of deal is that? Don't be stupid. What, you're not going to give me any kind of deals? Why would I do that? You will be charged the full price for every single thing. What do you mean? I thought you'd give me a deal so I already made reservations for it. Wait, already? I made the reservations for the wedding yesterday. I even paid the deposit. You are aware that the company takes an estimate of 10% of the cost, right? And cancelling after setting the reservations means that we'll charge you for that as well. All the money that you paid for the deposit is not coming back to you at all. Everything? So that seven grand I paid isn't coming back? This should have been properly explained to you already. Someone did mention at work yesterday about landing a huge contract. Guess this is what it was. This has to be a joke. Come on. The wedding gets cancelled, I get dumped by Casey, and my seven grand won't be refunded to me. I thought you'd give me a good deal and hook me up to make things better for me. Okay. Then ask a favor from the president of the company herself. If you want to cancel, make sure you come directly to the office to hand in the papers, alright? I'll put my everything into aiding you to cancel. Everything is just horrible. Anyone would misunderstand when being told that. Plus, he assumed that you would give him a deal on my wonderful wedding. How could he promise something without making sure of it? I couldn't even stand to look at him any longer and got rid of him. Yeah, I heard from Jason a while ago. <laughs> Just when I thought I hit jackpot, he turns out to be a simple office worker with zero savings. He isn't worthy of being my husband. That's why you have to introduce me to a man who is worthy. You have to know any other presidents, right? Help you out? Yes! Company presidents have other president friends as well, right? There's no way you don't know any. Of course I don't know any. I am hardworking as the president, 
but my private life is no different from before. I only have a handful of friends. What? You continue to be a useless loser even as an adult. If that's the case, go out there and make some president friends. You should be able to make friends with amazing men with your ranking. Bring the best of the best to me immediately once you do. Ugh, don't be brash. Besides, you can easily find a man without my help anyways. Don't look for a man that meets your tastes on your own. That isn't enough! I need a rich man who is the president of a company. Anything less than that would be embarrassing to show others. To the others? I already told my friends that I'm getting married to a president and that I'll have a fancy wedding. I promise that I'll introduce them to him. There is no way that I can tell them that it got called off. That's why I need to find a replacement immediately. If that's the case, then you're fine. Everyone from our middle school already knows about it already. What? So, there is no need to find someone like that so desperately. They all know you don't have a president boyfriend, so nobody is really interested if you try to find a replacement. What are you talking about? How does everyone know about that? I only just found out about it recently myself. You were bragging about your engagement to Jason to everyone, weren't you? You told not only our former classmates, but everyone who was in our grades individually, how you're getting married to the president of the company. Uh-huh. Even if I didn't have as much as you do, I still have friends from middle school as well. Even though she was in a different class, she's still my friend. She knows about how I used to date Jason. I even introduced her to him, so I guess that's where the news about how he was stolen from me started. Also, how he claimed to be the president but in fact just a normal office worker. What did you say? Oh, don't be mad at my friend, okay? She didn't mean for the news to spread but only told a select number of people as well. She was telling others about how you had the audacity to steal him from another person and then brag about your engagement like nothing happened. It seemed like the conversation was so interesting that it just spread. Gosh, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. So everyone thinks I was lying the entire time over a plain office worker? Lying about him being a president and marrying him? Seems like it. If I'm being honest, it seems like everyone has only pity for you. Something about how you peaked in middle school and can't let go of that. And that you need to be the center of attention at all times. No, they've got it all wrong. I don't need pity. I had a misunderstanding and didn't mean to lie about it. Now, I'll be looked at with pitiful eyes by everyone in town. Before you go look for a partner, you should probably go and fix this misunderstanding first. If you don't, I have a feeling that this is only gonna get worse for you. Anyways, I have to go to work, so I'll be taking my leave now. Hope you can get this all sorted out before any more damage is done. After all that, Casey went around town trying to fix the misunderstanding. But in order for her to do so, she had to embarrassingly explain about how she was a homewrecker to my relationship. The entire situation turned into an awkward mess for both her and anyone she explained herself to. Probably due to being the joke of our middle school, she hasn't contacted anyone from there anymore. As for Jason, he got an earful from his parents. On top of that, his friends have been more wary of hanging around him and distanced themselves. It seems he is living a very lonely life as well. Hopefully, no more couples who try to get married at my venue meets this kind of fate. Hey Jen, I'm so sorry about dinner last night. Not your fault. I know it's not, but I absolutely hate how mom treated you. I'm used to it by now. 
Look, I know she's living with you, so you have to stay on her good side. But she has always been the source of all my problems. She's the reason my self-esteem is at basically zero. So, I've decided that I can't see her anymore. What? But what about me? When will I see you? Not while Mom's around. Let me talk to her. If I can get her to apologize, will that help? Apologize for how terrible she was at dinner, or apologize for the lifetime of neglect? Either way, it's not going to work. I finally have a good job and a good boyfriend, and I can't let Mom derail that with her constant insults. Sorry, Sally. I'm done. Please. I don't want to lose you. I can't kick Mom out because she has nowhere else to go, but I don't want to lose my sister either. Sally, I love you. But you can't possibly understand how much that woman has demolished my self-esteem. She's my mother, too. I know how you feel better than anyone. Do you? Come on, Sally, even you know that's total BS. She doted on you all our lives while I was the one who was always too fat and too ugly. Do you remember what she gave you for your eighth birthday? What does that have to do with anything? She gave you a new bike, the exact model that you asked for. And do you remember what she gave me for my eighth birthday? Nothing, because she forgot. And when you reminded her, she got all pissy and drove us to Denny's for my birthday dinner. Do you remember that? Yes. And she wouldn't even tell the waiter it was my birthday because she didn't want them to give us a free ice cream. Yeah, I know, that's terrible. She's terrible. She's terrible to me, Sally. She's the perfect mother to you. I wouldn't say that. I mean, she's living here rent-free. And when I came out, she refused to even look at my girlfriend until I forced her to invite her over. Yes, but she got over that pretty quickly. And her reaction to Kate is nothing compared to last night. As soon as I mentioned Richard... Well, you were there. Honestly, Sally, I'm finally feeling good about myself. I finally have my life together. And any interaction with Mom is just going to make me spiral backward. You understand, right? I do. And I'm sorry. It's not your fault. And I know you don't actually like having her in your house, but for now, I'm going to have to keep my distance, okay? Fine. But I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Hi, honey. I'm at the supermarket now. Is there anything you need me to pick up? You're shopping? Just a few things. With what money, exactly? I still have your card, remember? Mom, please don't buy anything. We're fully stocked here, and I'd rather do the shopping myself. Of course, dear. I'm sorry. You've been such a blessing in my life, and I don't want to seem like a leech. Thank you. Also, there's something I wanted to talk about. Over text? Uh-oh. What do you mean? Oh, honey, you know you're not good at confronting things. Like, last night at dinner, you barely said a word when the conversation got heated. I know that if you need to tell me something serious, you'll do it over text. It's cute, really. You're such a kind person that you can't do face-to-face -face confrontations. It's one of the reasons I love you so much. So what's the big drama this time? Is Jen continuing to make bad choices? Mom, Jen said she doesn't want to see you anymore. Which means I won't get to see her while you're around. Oh, what a shame. Is that all you're going to say? Honey, you heard about Jen's poor life choices lately. I think it's probably for the best that we cut and run. Mom! She's your daughter. How can you be so casual when she says she wants to cut you from her life? Were you even listening when she told us about her boyfriend? Of course I was. I'm happy for them. Happy? Sally, she's dating her boss, who is 15 years older than her, and married. No daughter of mine is going to sleep with a married man to get a promotion. First of all, Richard isn't her boss. He's the head of a different department. And Jen is amazing at her job. She thinks she'll be promoted by the end of the year, and then the two of them will be equals in the company. Right, and he has nothing to do with her promotion. 
He's from a different department. And second, he isn't married. He's been divorced for six months now. Hmm, he got a divorce after they met, right? She had nothing to do with Richard's divorce. And who are you to talk? You've been married three times. Exactly. And each time ended because of another woman. I know harlots when I see them. Are you calling your own daughter a harlot? And who even uses that word anymore? Sally, you only see the good in people. It's a wonderful skill, but it's also extremely damaging. You can't see your sister for who she really is. She's using Richard to get a rich husband and a good job. You know she's only successful because of him. She's successful because she works hard. She's better off than I am. Don't say that. You know I'm prouder of you than anything else in my life. Including Jen? Well, yes. Including Jen. Mom, I can't let you treat my sister like this. Not if you want to keep me in your life, too. Not if you want to continue to stay with me. What are you saying? I'm saying that you need to apologize to Jen for everything. You need to get over all your wild assumptions and finally be a loving mother. You need to treat Jen the same way you treat me. Is that really what you want? Yes. If it means keeping both you and Jen in my life, then yes, I need you to get over yourself and make amends. Is that clear? Mom? Absolutely. I'll send her a text. No, you, me, and Jen are going to have a do-over dinner tonight. We're going to talk through all these issues and finally be a family again. Okay. Thank you. And don't spend any more of my money, okay? Sorry, I'm in the checkout line right now. Jen, please talk to me. I thought you understood where I was coming from. I do, and I don't accept it. What? I don't accept that our family is so irreparably broken that we have to stop seeing each other. I love you and mom. And I can't just sit by and let us all drift apart. All throughout childhood, I kept quiet when mom was very obviously playing favorites. I should have said something then. I should have defended you. But you're my big sister, and I felt so awkward. And I literally can't handle this kind of confrontation. But I have to now, because I can't lose you. Okay. Okay? Really? Great! So come here for dinner tonight. Is six okay? It will just be you, me, and mom. We have a lot to talk about. And if it doesn't work out, I'll understand if you want to go no contact. But we have to try. Is that acceptable? Yes. Great! If Richard can come too. What? That's my deal. I'll give mom one more chance, but only if she meets my boyfriend and accepts that he's in my life. Okay. I accept those terms. Thanks. You're still not home? No, I had a few more errands to run. Okay, but I will be checking my bank statement tonight. I hope you're not spending any more of my money. Of course not, dear. Do you need me to come home and help prepare dinner? No, I got it covered. Just be here at six. Of course. I wouldn't dream of missing it. And I wanted to give you a heads up. I know, I know. I'll be on my best behavior. I'll make sure that Jen thinks I love her equally. Yes, that's important. But also, I wanted you to know that Richard is joining us for dinner, too. Richard? You better not change your mind about coming to dinner. Does he have to come? Yes. Jen says that's the only way she'll agree to give you a second chance. And trust me, you'll like him. He's very funny. You've met him before? Yes, several times. He acts much younger than he is. Really, he's a great guy. And even if he wasn't, it's not your place to say anything. You met him and you didn't tell me? Mom, you're still coming to dinner, right? Six o'clock. I'll be there. Any other nasty surprises I should know about? See you at six. Mom, where are you? Dinner's ready. Everyone else is here. 
Sorry, honey, I'm running late. It would have been nice if you told me before. When will you get here? Soon. When? So Richard is there? Yes, we're all waiting for you. Let me guess, is he sitting next to Jen? Does he have his arm around her? Is he leading the conversation? Are you outside watching us or something? No, I'm just guessing. I know his type. Mom! Sorry, but I'm right, aren't I? I am not in the mood for this. Tonight is your last chance. And where are you? I'm close. I'll be there soon. Be here in the next ten minutes or we're done. You can pack your bags. Fine. You're still not here. Mom! I'm sorry, honey, but I'm not coming. What? It's okay. It's okay if I lose Jen, and I know I'll never lose you. I thought I made myself clear. This is your only chance. If you bail on this dinner, I'm going to kick you out. You're forcing me to side with Jen, and I don't want to side with anyone. I just want us to be a family. I know you do. And I know you won't kick me out. You'll never turn your back on me, no matter what you say. That's why you're my favorite daughter. Sally, are you still there? Seriously, Mom? Jen is crying in the other room, and Richard is comforting her. They're seconds away from leaving. What the hell? Hi, dear. What is your problem with her? How could her own mother treat her like this? Do you really want to know? Yes! Answer my question. What was the question again? How could you treat Jen like this? Because I'm not her mother. What? I should have told you this a long time ago. I'm sorry I didn't. You're my daughter, and I love you. But before you were born, your Aunt Kathy got pregnant. She was sleeping with her boss. When he found out that she was carrying his child, he fired her and ordered her to stay away from him. Obviously, she couldn't raise a baby by herself. She was single and jobless. So I volunteered to help. Aunt Kathy is Jen's real mom? Yes. And she didn't die in a car accident like I told you. She died in childbirth. To protect everyone, I took in the baby as my own. Oh my god! That explains why you never treated her the same way you treated me. Honey, I treated you both equally, even though you were my favorite. Don't lie to yourself. You never saw Jen as a real daughter, did you? Well, she's not. Not biologically, but you raised her as a daughter. She deserved a mother just like everyone else. I tried, okay? I tried to love her the way that I loved you, but I just couldn't. And now she's following in her real mother's footsteps. Sleeping with her boss, making terrible decisions, she's going to end up just like Kathy. None of this is her fault, Mom. You lied to her since she was born. You lied to both of us. To protect you? And a lot of good that did. She spent her life thinking that her mother hated her. If you took on the responsibility of raising her, you should have treated her like a daughter. I tried my best. You're sure not trying your best right now. You need to come here before she leaves and explain everything. I can't. I'm sorry. I'll see you in the morning. I'm so sorry, Sally. Richard and I couldn't stay there any longer. Clearly, Mom wasn't going to show up. Wait! I was just texting her! Too late. I know you tried, but obviously this family is more broken than you thought. You're right. It is. I'll miss you. Come back, please! There's something you need to know about Mom. I think we know enough. Please. I need to tell you face to face. You know you can't handle face to face conversations. Fine. I'm just going to say it. Mom said that she isn't your real mother. She lied to us all our lives. Your real mom is Aunt Kathy. She died during childbirth and Mom took you in and pretended you were her real daughter. 
Jen, are you there? I'm here. I guess Kathy had an affair with her boss. Which explains why she's so freaked out about how you and Richard met. Richard and I didn't have an affair. I know. But Mom's viewpoint on everything is so warped that she sees what she wants to see. So all my life, I thought my mother didn't love me. But in reality, I never had a mother at all. I am so sorry. You never deserved any of this pain. Well, I guess that explains everything. Bye, Sally. Wait! Please, come back. You still have me. Do I? I'm not even your sister anymore. I'm your cousin, I guess. No! Blood doesn't matter. You'll always be my sister. I'll always be here for you. It's too late, Sally. <laughs> Jen? Jen! Sally, honey, I apologize about last night. I decided it would be better if I stayed with a friend. But I'm back now, and I'm having trouble getting into the house. I think there's something wrong with my key. Sally, I changed the locks. What? Mom, I'm only going to say this once, and then I'll block your number, okay? You aren't my mother. Did you misunderstand me last night? I am your mother. I'm just not Jen. No, a real mother stands by her children, biological or not. You never stood by Jen, even when she needed you most. And I never said anything because I was always afraid of hurting you and putting even more strain in our family. I'll live with that regret my whole life, but I'm finally going to do something about it. You are not welcome in my house anymore. And I will not think of you as my mother. That's ridiculous. Sally, you're being irrational. I know you love Jen and you're blind to her flaws, but don't be angry at me. Be angry at her poor decisions. She's following in Kathy's footsteps and she's going to end up just like she did. Her only poor decision was loving you. And thankfully, she doesn't anymore. Neither do I. You can't do this to me. Where will I go? I don't know. Maybe go back to whatever guy you hooked up with last night. Stay with him. Oh, and I checked my bank account. You spent more of my money than I realized. So I've canceled that card and I'm keeping all your stuff as payment for everything you owe me. I hope you understand. No! Let me in! Sorry, I can't. I'm with Jen and Richard right now. We're celebrating a new start. It's a little celebration. Family stuff. Obviously, you're not invited. Mom tried to contact me dozens of times after that, but eventually she got the hint and stopped trying. Ironically, she ended up staying with her cousin in another state, but the last I heard, she burned enough bridges there to be kicked out. I'm not sure where she'll end up, but it won't be with me. The relationship between Jen and I is better than ever. We're still sisters, and it's taking us a lot of time and therapy to deal with decades of resentment and jealousy, but we talk to each other almost every day. Honestly, I don't think I'd have had the strength to finally stand up to my mother if Jin hadn't forced me. None of this would have come to light if I hadn't been afraid of losing her forever. And as for Jen and Richard, they're engaged now. Their wedding is in the fall, but I've been helping out with most of the planning. Jen is a bit busy with her new promotion. I love my sister, and I couldn't be happier for her.